Okay, in this video I'll be looking at exponential growth and decay models, mostly growth. And we're going to start by doing a little review and that will lead into some new things. And so first of all, uh, we're talking about continuous compounding here. It says after t years, the balance A in an account with principal P and annual interest rate R in decimal form is given by the following formulas. For n compoundings per year, we have A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R over N, all to the NT power. So this is the formula we've used before, and I just want to remind you of the parts. So P is principal, or stands for principal or the starting amount, and R is for interest rate, and we know interest rates should be written in decimal form. And then n is the number of times the interest is compounded per year. So if, for example, in your checking account, they're um, applying interest to your account each month, that means 12 times a year they're compounding interest on your account. So n would be 12 there. So that's an example. Um, and then finally, t is time in years. Now it is possible to have t be uh, like in days or months or other um, units, but normally it's going to be years. All right, so now it does say here for compound or for continuous compounding, we're going to use this formula a equals p times e to the rt power. I call it the PERT formula, and really the difference is instead of compounding you know, like every or 12 times a year, it's literally a situation where they're applying interest to your account continuously. Now it sounds like you're going to get a lot more money by doing that, but it's not as much as you might think, but it does make a difference. All right, so numbers one and two are review problems. You might want to try doing them and then seeing how you did, you know, by watching the video. All right, so on the first one here, it says, Mandy's grandparents invest $10,000 for her at birth in an account that pays 8.5% interest compounded quarterly. How much will be in the account for her retirement at age 55? So first of all, uh, the starting amount is 10000 so that's our P. The interest rate is 8.5%. So R is going to be 0 0.085, and uh, it's compounded quarterly, so that means N is equal to 4. And then finally, uh, you know, she's born, and we want to know how much is going to be the, in the account when she retires at age 55, so that would mean T is 55. All right, so let's go ahead and plug these numbers in. So here's our formula and P is 10,000, and that'll be times 1 plus R over N, so that'll be 0 0.085 over 4, and that's all to the NT power, or 4 times 55. So now just be careful when you put this into your calculator that you're getting this answer here, which is $1,021,000. $69.49. So that's a pretty nice chunk of change for this brand new baby when she retires in 55 years. Okay, let's look at number two. So again, if you haven't already tried it, I would encourage you to do so and then watch the video. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and write the formula. So here P is 5,000. Our interest rate is 0 0.06. Uh, notice it's compounded sem semi-annually, so N is 2. It means twice a year they're applying interest to your account, every six months. And then finally it says, uh, how much will you have as a down payment six years, six years later? So T is 6. Notice it says how much, whoops, Actually, we don't need to discuss that. That's just A. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in our numbers. So the starting amount is $5,000. It'll be 1 plus 
r, which is 0 0.06, over n, which is 2, and that'll be to the nt power. So that'll be 2 times 6. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get $7,128.80. OK, let's move on to the next slide. So here it says if $12,000 is invested in a long-term trust fund at 4% and the interest is compounded continuously, so notice this is continuous, and so this is where we're going to be using that new PERT formula. It says uh, in letter A, find the amount in the account after 15 years. So of course T equals 15. So let's go ahead and write down our formula and let's plug in the numbers. So it's 12,000 is our initial uh, investment. That'll be times e to the RT power. So that'll be 0 0.04 times 15. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get $21,865.43. Now in B it says, how long will it take the account to grow to a value of 100,000? So now the initial amount is 12,000, and we're saying it's going to grow to this amount. So that's actually this value here, the A value. And so let's go ahead and write down the formula. And let's plug in A and P. So A is 100,000, P is 12,000. So again, our $12,000 that we invest, we want to see how long it's going to take until it grows to 100,000. So that's our A value. Notice what we're looking for here is our T. It's asking us how long it's going to take. So it'll be times E. Our R is 0.04 and t again is what we don't know. Now when you look at this equation, we've actually solved one like this one previously when we were solving exponential equations. And what we have here is, is an extra number. Because basically if you could get rid of this 12,000, notice we have base, exponent, answer. This is an exponential equation. It's just got an extra number in it. So how could I get rid of that 12,000? Well, all we need to do, since it's 12,000 times e to the 0.04t, let's divide both sides by 12,000. So when we do that, now notice, I could just leave this as a simplified fraction. Well, it'd really be 10 twelfths or 5 6. But I'm going to go ahead and write it as a decimal. I'm just going to use lots of decimal places. So either way will work fine. And uh, let's see, so the, on the other side, we have e to the 0.04t power. So now this is an exponential, uh, it is an exponential equation. And it's got the three parts, base, exponent, answer. And notice our variables in the exponent. This is when we end up switching to logarithmic form to solve for the variable. And so let's go ahead and do that. This is a, we're going to write log, and then it's a base e log. The answer goes here, and the exponent goes over here. I would remind you of that little around the world thing I do. If you have e to the 0.04t power, you get an answer of 8.3333, which is exactly what we had. And so we've translated this correctly. The only thing is we don't write log base e. We actually write natural log. So I'm going to change that. And we're almost there. We just need to solve for t. So we're going to want to divide by 0 0.04 on both sides. And so you're going to end up with natural log of 8.3333 all divided by 0 0.04, which is 53.01 or about 53 years. So it's going to take a long time for $12,000 to grow to $100,000 at an interest rate of 4%. So you would, in a perfect world, you'd like to get a better interest rate than that. But at the same time, higher interest rates usually going to have more risk. All right, so 
Let's look at letter C here. It says, how long does it take for your investment to double in value? Now keep in mind, this is the original $12,000 investment. So if we want it to double in value, it's going to go from $12,000 to being worth $24,000. And so now P is $12,000 as it was before, but our A is going to be $24,000. So let's go ahead and write the formula and let's plug in those numbers. So A is 24,000, P is 12,000, and it'd be times E to the 0 0.04T. And so this is just like solving the equation we just solved up above. I would encourage you to solve the equation using the same steps and then watch the video. All right, so you should have divided both sides by 12,000. You get 2 is equal to e to the 0.04t power. Now I want to point something out here. Anytime you're doing these uh, doubling types of problems, you're going to end up with an equation that looks like this one here, where you have a 2 on the left side. And here's why. Basically, if this is the original amount, no matter what it is, if you double it here, when you divide by this original amount on both sides, you're always going to end up with 2 here. And so there's actually a formula that people sometimes use that looks like this here. But uh, I prefer to do it this way so you can see exactly where it's coming from. Okay, so, but we should always expect an equation that looks like this when we're, at some point, when we're uh, doing a problem like this where we're looking at doubling values or doubling time is what they call this. Okay, so notice we have an exponential equation. We'll want to change that to logarithmic form. So it's log base e of 2 is equal to 0 0.04t. We want to write that using the ln notation. And let's divide both sides by 0 0.04. And we're going to end up getting 17.3 when you plug that into your calculator. So it takes about 17 years. All right, let's go ahead and move to the next slide here. It says here, um, let's see, the function, so this is for population growth. The function p of t equals p naught or p sub 0. So p naught is how we tend to say that. So p naught times e to the kt power, where k is greater than 0, can model population growth. Now I want you to notice something. This looks a lot like our PERT formula. a equals p times e to the rt power. So the difference is, instead of being um, the principal or the starting amount, P naught, notice here it's the population, oh wait, no, I got the wrong one here. It's the population at time zero. So it's not a money amount, it's a population amount. And then instead of using R, which stands for an interest rate, we're using K, which stands for a growth rate. But they're both rates. Really, this is just a more general form. All right, so let me erase this, and let's continue on. So P of t is the population if after time t. P naught is the population at time 0. So basically, that's our population um, when we start uh, the, the, you know, looking at this uh, town or, or country or whatever it is. It's the starting population. t is the amount of time and k is the exponential growth rate. Notice here it says the growth rate must be the same as the time unit. So for example, it is possible that the time could, like if we're talking about bacteria, bacteria grows extremely fast. So maybe our time would be in hours. And so that means our exponent, uh, exponential growth would be a growth rate per hour. So with the problems we're doing, we're going to be working in years, but it doesn't have to be years. All right, so let's look at number one. 
It says in 2009, the population of Mexico was about 111.2 million, and the exponential growth rate was 1.13% per year. Find the exponential growth function. All right, so, well, well let's see. Our starting population, or our P0, is 111.2. Our growth rate, whoop, it's not R, it's going to be K, is 0 0.0113. Just move that decimal 2 to the left. And so let's go ahead and write down the formula. And let's plug in our P0 and our K to get our exponential growth function. So it'll be P of T is equal to 1.0 or 111.2 times e to the kt power, that's going to be 0 0.0113 times t. And so this is our growth function. And so if we want to estimate the population in 2014, now remember, it was 111.2 million in 2009. And so 2014, that's going to be five years later. If you want, you can just subtract those two numbers. And so our t here is 5. It's all we're doing is finding p of 5. So you'd want to plug that into the formula. And when you put that into the calculator, you should get 117.7. And don't forget, that's in millions. All right, on C it says, when will the population reach 150 million? Notice D talks about the doubling time. So this is very similar to what we did on the previous slide. I would encourage you to give it a try and see if you can figure out how to solve these and then watch the video. Um, and you can use that previous problem as your guide. Okay, so if we want to know when the population's going to reach 150 million, notice it's saying when, so basically we're looking for the time here. And so let's go ahead and write our formula. And if we want to know how long it's going to take to reach 150 million people, notice A, or not, it's not A in this case, we call it P of T, is going to be the 150 million. So this becomes 150 is equal to 0.111, I'm sorry, 111.2 times e to the 0 0.0113t. So let's, first we're going to need to divide by 111.2. You're going to get 1.34892. Again, I want to carry a lot of decimal places if I'm going to round. And on the other side, we have e to the point 0 0.0113 times t power. We're going to want to switch that to log form. It'll be the log base e of 1.34892 equals 0 0.0113t. We'll switch that to uh, the ln form and divide both sides by 0 0.0113. And so you're going to end up getting 26.487. And so that's about 26.5 years. Now, if you want to actually know when that would be, well, you would start in 20, 000, or 2009 and add 26.5 years. So that's 2035.5, which would be in the year 2036. All right, let's look at D. So basically, if we're going to double the population, it's going to go from 111.2 to 222.4 million. And so let's go ahead and write out our formula. We need to replace P of T with 222.4. And we're going to solve this the way we previously solved uh, the problem on the previous slide, where we dealt with doubling time. We're going to divide both sides by 111.2. We get 2 is equal to e to the point 0, 0.0113 times t power. When you switch to log form, you're going to get log base uh, e of 2 
is equal to 0 0.0113 times t. And we're going to write that as a natural log and divide both sides by 0 0.0113. And you end up getting t is equal to 61.34. And so it's going to be about 61 years. If you wanted to know what year that would be, you would add 61 to 2009. And you can see that would be in the year 2070. 150 million people, that's a lot of people just for one city. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here, and I'll do the second part in a separate video.